Peripheral arterial disease is a very important diagnosis. Essentially, it stands for arterial disease that occurs within the vasculature in the extremities, typically in the legs, but it can affect the carotid arteries in the neck, the arm arteries, the kidney arteries. The most common symptom of peripheral arterial disease that most of our patients identify is pain when they walk. So a common complaint will be calf or thigh pain that gets worse walking and better with rest. A lot of patients do have symptoms, but what's important to understand with PAD is a lot of patients don't have symptoms. I would say about a third of our patients, especially those with diabetes, may never have the same leg pain that others might. And the reason that's important is that those patients can sometimes be at risk of something we call critical limb ischemia. These are patients who start noticing an ulcer on the toe or the heel, um, a purple or black toe, and it may be ignored for a few days or a few weeks. Uh, they may see a primary care physician or a cardiologist, and at that point we start to realize, listen, this is a marker of significant arterial disease that's impacting the flow down to the foot. And in that context, we say that we have to make the diagnosis and affect the treatment option quickly. Um, so the way we make the diagnosis of PAD is typically through a couple of non-invasive tests. The first would be blood pressure measurements in the legs, something called an ankle brachial index. It's a simple test and takes about 20 to 30 minutes to perform. Is a rough estimate of how the circulation to the legs compares to that elsewhere in the body. Another possible screening tool for peripheral arterial disease based on our uh, pre-test probability would be to get an ultrasound of the legs. With an ultrasound, we can identify if there's any regions of concern where there's narrowing within the artery. In patients who have abnormal uh, non-invasive studies, who are having significant symptoms of leg pain, or who have the more concerning features of critical limb ischemia, sometimes we recommend a peripheral angiogram. So this would be a minimally invasive test where we insert a small IV into one of the arteries in the legs and through contrast injection and using fluoroscopy imaging, we can identify the extent of how much plaque has built up. Oftentimes those blockages in the legs can be treated very well through a combination of wound angioplasty and or stenting. And we work in a multidisciplinary fashion with our vascular, vascular surgery colleagues to determine if other treatment options may be more effective long term. So the long-term treatment options for peripheral arterial disease, it really comes down to a multimodality approach. In patients who have significant symptoms, in patients who have critical limb ischemia involving ulcers or wounds on the legs, the first step is to do an angiogram, which is a minimally invasive test, to identify where the blockages are and to hopefully fix it minimally invasively through a combination of balloon angioplasty and or stenting. Patients will sometimes have such extensive vascular disease where there may be a better alternative, uh, and that would, for example, involve vascular bypass surgery. Uh, with our vascular surgeons within Amita Health, who we work very closely and collaboratively with, um, oftentimes patients can have a more durable result for severe disease if a vein or a synthetic graft material bypasses the arterial blockage. So we work closely as a team and ultimately it's all about the patient's short and long-term uh, benefit. And I think again, the key with peripheral arterial disease is to understand that symptoms such as leg pain could be a marker of a more significant issue, but a lot of patients don't have those symptoms. And so if you have certain risk factors like diabetes, high cholesterol, history of smoking or tobacco use, um, high blood pressure, family history, it's important to get screened. And, and the screening may be something simple as um, a primary care physician or a cardiologist feeling the pulses in the feet or getting a non-invasive test like blood pressure measurements. But in those where there's a higher level of concern based on symptoms or active wounds on the feet, uh, we tend to move a little bit quicker and to get to the uh, ultimate diagnosis of PAD.